have not in the world is Greek. To be born Greek is to be magnificently cursed. To a surprisingly large number of people, it means you personally built the Acropolis, you created Delphi, the theater, and you gave birth to the concept of democracy. The truth is that you are poor, many of your people can't read, and the rare moments that you tasted of democracy and independence foreign protectors and their Greek poppers snatched away from you. melons don't fit under the same arm. But in Athens, which only 60 years ago had 400,000 people, today has to embrace nearly 4 million. Many were farmers. The soil not always rich. Governments often neglected and school facilities needed. So they came to Athens in the hope of a better life. Athens is like a great mother who opens herself to Greeks from every part of the country. Even though she's already stretched beyond what is physically bearable, in her heart, Athens has still room for one more Greek. We call the Acropolis the Holy Rock. It was built 500 years before Christ. People from all the world flood to touch it, to see it. I am not one of those who cherish the past so much that they forget the present. But when I come up here, I'm embraced by the past. There's a sense of balance and beauty and this harmonious marriage of art and nature exhilarates. They say that Athens was named after the goddess Athena, who cast her spear into the holy rock and made an olive tree sprout from it. Still others claim that the word Athens comes from the Homeric Enikose, which means I have climbed. So Athens is a city on a hill. And now we will do something very dangerous, a drive through Athens. You will see. The Russians play roulette with pistols. We do it with automobiles. Costa is my faithful, adored, stubborn driver. Inevitably, he takes the longest route to cover the shortest distance. I'm sure he does so just to provoke me. <laughs> If you ask Costa, he's not driving an automobile. He believes he's driving a chariot. He's a terrible chauffeur, you know. She's a good chauffeur. Shut up, Ingrid. 
Το παραθύρο μου στέλνω ένα, δύο και τρία και τέσσερα φτιά. Φτάνω στο λιμάνι, ένα και δύο και τρία και τέσσερα φτιά. Manos Kajiraikis writes the songs that Greece sings. He's never on Sunday is a song the whole world sings. What emerges is a defiance of hardship. And it all comes out as a Greek we shall overcome. the Acropolis, a few meters away from the little Byzantine church of Kapnikarea, and next to an Arabic mosque, is Monastiraiki, a place that breathes, yells, and sells everything imaginable. <laughs> 
Ποιο μισή και λέγεται Κοσπενίδα παρακαλώ Για λέγε και εσύ Και λέγεται με ποιο μισή Και τα λεφτά στο χέρι Here the centuries and the antiques meet. The rich and the poor meet, all looking for bargain. And what happens here is classic. Foreign tourists are persuaded to buy a convoloi that you call worry beads. And thus they feel a little Greek. As for the Greek customer, what he wants is to buy an American pair of jeans or a second-hand Japanese camera. The language of commerce is universal, but more persuasive in Greek. This is where Socrates walked with his students. They plied him with questions, and always he answered with more questions. Within 16 years, two Nobel Prizes have been awarded to Greek poets, to George Seferis and to Odysseus Elitis in 1979. Also, two Lenin Prizes have gone to Greek poets, Varnalis and Regis. How can one explain the extraordinary phenomenon that this small country has produced so many important poets, Solomos, Sikelianos, Kavafi, and Calvo. In Greece, everything leads to poetry. That was yesterday. Today, many women do not limit their ambitions to marriage and childbearing, but my grandmother, had she seen Stella, would have been shocked. There are, of course, all kinds of women in this city, as there are every other city of the world. But the women of Athens have a special quality visible to those who have eyes to see it. When I was in exile, 
I felt a great nostalgia for Greece. I became so obsessed with all things Greek that people started calling me a professional Greek. I didn't mind it at all. When I'm away, the national anthem can make me cry. You see how ridiculous I am. On the 28th day of October, 1940, Hitler's partner Mussolini attacked Greece and demanded surrender. The answer of the Greek people was Ochi. Ochi in Greek means no. Ever since, Ochi Day has been celebrated as a national holiday. History records that all through the Nazi occupation, the resistance of the Greek people was violent. This is the first cemetery of Athens. I think it's very beautiful. And I dream of being buried here with my grandfather and my father. And here is the sleeping beauty of Halepas. Uh, everybody admires that, and Halepas too. He was a great sculptor. And. Here is Lyne, a hero of our resistance during the dictatorship, Alekos Panavoulis. It was he who was ready to give up his life to kill the dictator Papadopoulos. Later, he died in a most curious car accident. I became a deputy of the Socialist Party in the Greek Parliament in November 1977. For me, it was a triumph and a great emotion, winning my first election, especially as I received 51% by votes from women. I believe that the people of Piraeus were honoring my struggle against the dictatorship and not Melina Mercury, the actress. I will never abandon those people. I am committed to them. I want to fight for them, here in the parliament, in the press, on the street. And I shall always feel proud, as I do now, when they come to me with their problems, as old friends calling me warmly, Melina. Just Melina, and never Miss Mercury. This monastery of Kesariani, in the hills about Athens, is holy, not only because it was a place of worship, but because many brave Greeks died near here. This earth is sacred. It has been drenched with the blood of hundreds of brave young men 
who gave their lives fighting against fascism and Nazism. On the 1st of May, in 1944, 200 brave young men were executed. They were not the first nor the last. Among them was Pilius Ambeloyanis, a 20-year-old who found time before he was shot to write a note. He pinned it to his jacket and threw it out into the street. The message said, this is how the honorable Greeks die, proud, long live freedom. Passerby, please take this coat to the above address. It's the last wish of a man who knew how to die. I would like to tell you a short story as we near the end of this journey through Athens. 160 years ago, while the Turks were besieged by the Greeks on the Acropolis, they ran out of lead for their bullets and so began destroying the ancient columns of the Parthenon in order to take out the metal that runs through the center of them. The Greeks saw what was happening and sent a message to the Turks to stop destroying the columns. If you need lead, we will send you some. And they did. That is how much our ancestors loved this city and its treasures. And I love it too. But I don't only see the ancient ruins. I also see an eternally beating heart. A heart that beats stronger today than ever before. I love this city. For a while, I had to be away from it. But I hope never again. Athens may at times break your heart, but no other city has the power to move me to tears and laughter at the same time. This is my city, and this is where I will stay forever. I belong here. You understand, my friends?